What's up guys, it's Viltra here and today I'll be talking about sea combat in One Piece. A topic you would expect people to be talking about every single day, but apparently in One Piece it's a battle of uh, the land, land dwellers, so sea combat doesn't get really that much attention. Let's start basic with the definitions of what would be sea combat. So I'm talking about the combat in ships and I am talking about underwater combat. So of course the ones who would specialize in that and we would see often fighting like that is fishmen. And now in the latest chapter we see Lost Crew and they, we see that they actually specialize in that. that. Which actually makes sense because I mean their Lost Crew's names are based on like uh, sea creatures and like arctic creatures like Tenguin. Uh, Sachi means like killer bear or something if I remember. Lost name, it's like a spotted seal, but Oda just came up on it because he just realized he could. And Beppo is of course a polar bear, so you would expect them to be pretty good at fighting in the sea. And indeed, they specialize in that, and they even have the submarine for it. So what they try to do is take out the ships from underneath, like get the devil producers in the water so that they like drown. Or if they have just normal people there, then they can fight them in the water and have a huge advantage. Also, like we see Satsi using the water gun, I don't know if that was a very good impression of it or not, but uh, we see him using the water gun to take out the exploding apples that Toki Q threw at them, and it seems to be that uh, they do it often, like they fight from the sea against people who are on the land or on the sea, uh, or even in the air. So something that we really need to see in the story is uh, like people in the sea fighting someone in the air. Like <laughs> imagine how cool that would be, like the air person like maneuvering around and trying to hit the water guy, but you know, of course because they are in the water, the water like slows down their attack so they can dodge and then the other guy the water guy attacks back. Like a, a character I think would obviously who will probably have a fight like that, it's Jinbei. I feel like Jinbei will eventually fight someone who flies and he will he will win against them with like ranged attacks. Which would definitely be the first time that happens in One Piece. I feel like ranged attacks are either like used to like finish off like opponents that were already beaten and like came back uh, like awake or they are, they are used to take out fodder. It ha I don't think I've ever seen a ranged attack in One Piece that actually like you know took out the enemy. Okay, so now to the fishmen that also specialize in that. So they do it a bit differently, like of course because they are fishmen, so they can stay underwater for however long they like. But I mean, of course, it's possible that those crew like Sachi and Penguin are still fishmen as well. But um, the fishmen can stay underwater as long as they want and they become stronger in it. So they want to have like hand-to-hand -hand combat with someone who falls into the water. So for example, Sanchi in uh, Arlong Park, he had to fight against Kurobi, and even though he completely destroyed him uh, on land, whenever he went to the sea, like it became very really difficult because his kicks were slower and Kurobi's attacks were faster, and of course he uses the water attacks as well. But it seems that Kurobi couldn't do like the attacks Simbei or Hodik or someone like that could. So he wasn't as like he couldn't take as much of an advantage from that. But now to Simbei, of course. Jinbei has like the numerous like water current throws that he does. He can like throw them like hundreds of meters and they are extremely devastating like they can take out an enemy ship in one attack. And we see that happening in uh, Impel Down and Wano as well. So like the ships are gonna try to attack and Jinbei comes from underneath and like uh, thrusts the ships right into submission which sounds very wrong. Of course, like we see Hori um, in Fishman Island 2, like using it to his advantage. Like he fought Luffy underwater, and of course, Luffy is a devil fruit user. So, uh, I mean, normally Luffy would be just drowning, but he had the bubble around him that protected him from the water, which made him allowed him to use his strength and move and breathe, of course. So, in that battle, Hori was trying to pop Luffy's bubble and that way take him out. But because Hori was so much weaker, it couldn't work for him. And if you remember in the anime, Luffy struggled a lot more because they added like extra scenes of Hori like um, 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 like uh, eating the steroids and popping off like even harder so that he would basically die after. 
uh, a bit on a side note, but like, what was he planning to do? Because I've I've mentioned this like before, but on my previous channel. But how the like even if he took over Fishman Island, right? Uh, Pekoms and Tamagov were coming there. Would he even be able to defeat them? Like maybe, maybe, maybe he could take them out. But they use Haki. I feel like he would get destroyed by them. I feel like it would look the same as uh, like no gear Luffy just using Haki fighting how he looked. So he would just get wrecked and it just forget about his crewmates, like they would be de destroyed beyond repair. And like he was planning on attacking Marizoa, <laughs> which has two admirals and I mean at the reverie that was happening. So among the kings, I would imagine like maybe Doflamingo would be there. Like uh, he was planning on just defeating Doflamingo like that. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, and of course, he would have to take out him and like all of the Tenchu beat and their slaves and everything. Because he wasn't going to free the slaves, he was going to see, uh, to kill the uh, human slaves as well. Like, he was just the loser now. You know what? I feel like whenever he would go to the surface, he would get defeated by Smoker, who was waiting for Luffy to come out. So, um, Hody's plan of world domination was a bit doomed from the start. But because he was defeated by Luffy underwater, it's just really, like, that was the end. Uh, I lost track of what I was talking about, but yeah. I hope we see more of that kind of nubby, where, like, there's a time limit, or, uh, like, a water, uh, a devil fruit user in the water fighting a water user. And uh, even though there are no water devil fruits, you could have, like, some kind of a fishman who would be able to, like, carry water with him, and use the water as, like, projectile attacks on land. And um, I feel like Oda really missed the chance to, because both Sasaki, Sasaki was probably not a fishman actually, and um, Jack as well, both of them like could have potentially had that ability to throw water on land, you know, to take out like their enemy devil fruit users or like mechs, but they never, um, you know, Oda, I guess he didn't have enough time, of course. Wano was way too long already, he didn't want to extend it, but I feel like it would be better to extend it like that and remove like some of the scabbards. Like the scabbards, they were cool on their own right, but I, we didn't need nine of them. We could have had like six of them and they could have had their, you know, stories combined. Uh, like Denjiro and Asura Doji, like their stories could have been one. Like Denjiro could have originally rebelled and then went under submission or like undercover or whatever. Iso and Kiku, for example, could have just been one character. Iso could have just come back and he could have been like the sixth discovered. Like, you didn't need uh, Ikiku there. Of course, like, that allows Kanjuro's betrayal to have more emotion and more, like, fire. Because the problem with him was that Kanjuro was too weak to be intimidating. Like, when we found out the, the betrayal, he was like, oh no! He, but anyway. Because, like, in the chapter where he betrayed them, like, there's, like, <laughs> Luffy, Lo, Santi, Zoro, and obviously he's not touching any of them, like, even barely. So, he needed to be stronger, of course. But, ah, uh, whatever. Let's get into the... Oh, actually, in that fight, actually, we saw Kanzuro also using, taking advantage of the sea. Like, because they were on the ships, they couldn't really chase him, and he was able to fly away. So he used like his AOE attacks on all of the ships and caused some damage, I guess. Took out a few fodder, that's, and that's about all his contribution. Oh yeah, Los crew also take advantage of the submarine. Like, um, while fishmen can breathe underwater, Los crew can breathe in the submarine and then they can come out. Maybe they like punch the ships <laughs> or something. I, I think they are strong enough, probably. I feel I was pretty impressed with them. So maybe they like come out of the ship, uh, of the submarine, <laughs> punch the ship that they are attacking, go back into the submarine and, you know, breathe a bit. <laughs> I think that would be like a really hilarious way to fight. Like, okay, yeah, I know it's not very honest and it's not exactly fair, but we are taking advantage of your weaknesses around, around our strengths and that's what some fighting is all about, really. Also, I think, like, this might be, like, the kind of canon reason, I mean, of course, like, the out-of-canon reason is, uh, like, the resolution was really long, so you probably didn't need lost crewmates there. But at the same time, like, wouldn't it be so cool if they also, like, took part in the, like, Corrida Colosseum? Because you could place them there too, and they could fight the random guys who would become the Grand Fleet members, maybe. 
they could have had some impact. Of course, it would make Andres Rosa longer, but Andres Rosa, we obviously had like the Rebecca flashbacks that no one really cares about. And like the random Pompata guys who probably didn't really matter at the end. And I, I just feel like it would spice up the, the Colosseum. I just like imagine if there was Sachi and Penguin like fighting like uh, against uh, uh, Kenny, Kenny and Bobby Funk. <laughs> and you know, the other one would be like making the jacket and the other one would be like drinking the water of the eggs and they're like... Pew, pew, pew. Shooting them. <laughs> I think that would be really cool. But anyway, like I feel like uh, in the canon reason why a lost crew wasn't on, uh, like with him, Low left them on so to be safe because he thought that he would never be able to find the flamingo stuck on a ship where they could take advantage of their um, skills and abilities. So they were out of luck. So the flamingo could of course fly and he had his own island and he wouldn't really leave that. that so. Even if they went to the island, they would have to be on land, and they wouldn't be as effective on there. Another way we've seen characters avoid the water is like turning it into something else, into another substance. I don't know if Awakening could do that, but of course Aokichi, he can freeze the ice. Akainu can freeze the water. Akainu can probably like make it like boil all around him so that it can touch him. I don't know if that's possible or not, but maybe, maybe he can create that much heat. Perus Pero created the candy slug, and uh, I don't remember if Big Mama made the, made the sea itself a uh, homey or not, but that's also like another thing you could do, of course. And uh, I feel like this kind of battle is like the only way Law can win, so if there's some way he can like maybe teleport his crew and the uh, submarine like multiple times like take a few rocks throw them then teleport all of them uh, all of the guys he has to the rocks and to the other rocks and to the other rocks like a few kilometers away and that way escape from white blackbeard and then go underwater and somehow like this thing disguise their presence and do sneak attacks in the water because of course law cannot like himself swim but he can basically fly with the rocks. So he could potentially like be in the air, teleport to the air, like do the, like the air slashes at the Blackbeard's ships. And I don't think Blackbeard could like deflect the close slashes. They are a bit, uh, they are next level to the cannonballs that we normally see characters def uh, deflecting to defend their ships. And that way maybe Blackbeard gets sunk. Someone like maybe, maybe his brother crewmates save him. Maybe Aokichi freezes everything so that he can like, you know, stay alive. And um, like that way, Law could escape without making Blackbeard look weak. It would just make Law look really, really smart. And I feel like that's the best way uh, Oda could potentially write a, a scenario where there is no conclusive conclusion <laughs> or whatever uh, to the fight between Blackbeard and uh, Blackbeard's crew and Law's crew. And in the future, I feel like the sea battles, I feel like we are going to see one or two of them more. Because Jinbei is now on the crew, of course Blackbeard is like, it was mentioned in the recent chapters that isn't it a bit of a problem that you just have double fruit users, okay? So I feel like it's going to be relevant again in the future. And maybe Oda has left off the sea battle so that it would feel really novel in the final arc when the actual, like, actually important fight is among the ships themselves. And of course, we've seen like ships that have like especially good compatibilities. Like in Wano, we saw that Kaido's ships had like super good cannons that had really long range. And like the allied cannons couldn't reach them, but they could reach them. It's like the situation in Ukraine where they want longer range weapons so that they could have a, like a massive advantage in the exchange of uh, fire. And of course, because, you know, this is going longer and longer, the story, like, the powers are, you know, creeping up a bit, like, more characters have flight, there are more, like, special races, that it's not, like, the only thing a character has. So I feel like uh, the flying characters versus swimming characters in matchup is going to be more and more likely. For example, on Blackbeard crew, there's stronger that flies. Um, I mean, Blackbeard doesn't fly. Um, Lafitte has the wings, he, he definitely can fly. Uh, Katarina Devon could maybe turn into a bird or something like that. And like of course they have the, they have the Vegapunk tech and 
the, the um, wind smoke so it's like all of these things have the power of light added into them like in some form so if, oh and yeah and Shanti and like the air walk and stuff and the cp9 depot so many different ways characters can fly at this point and i mean i mean who's who could fly actually so we missed a chance to see Jinbei fighting who's who like from the water for a bit <laughs> i mean maybe it was a bit unnecessary I feel like I was satisfied with the who's who fight already, so I don't I don't think it was necessary to like add that into it. But it would have been cool, okay. So that's about my all for my uh, thoughts uh, on the subject. And uh, like and subscribe. Comment what you think about the sea battles in One Piece. Uh, and um, I'll see you again maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, I'm definitely going to be making more videos recently, and uh, not recently soon. So stay tuned, guys.